May and June have been two months filled with PR disasters for Meghan and Harry. It's definitely proving to be one of the worst periods for the couple and it's only getting worse. Let's get to the crunch. Let's do this in chronological order, starting with Nigeria. After a semi-successful PR trip disguised as a royal tour in Nigeria, which managed to produce some good headlines, Meghan and Harry were brought firmly back to planet Earth when their charity came under fire for its incompetence. It is the one area in which the Sussexes have any credibility and all of that went up in flames when the DA of California announced that the foundation was delinquent. This is not only embarrassing as the integrity of the organization was put into question, but also highlighted the lack of organization. The delinquency was declared due to the organization's failure to submit complete filings for the fiscal year. Reiterating the mismanagement that we all know Meghan and Harry are renowned for, but also jeopardizing the organization's credibility. If they can't file their basic annual paperwork correctly, how can we trust that they are managing all that charitable money correctly? Horrific end to their fake royal tour, but it only got worse when then Meghan was called out publicly by Nigeria's first lady for looking too naked. Meghan had obviously picked her outfits out carefully, but due to her lack of experience and inability to take advice, she managed to prepare a selection of completely inappropriate gowns, leading to the first lady publicly urging the young woman of Nigeria not to be influenced by the clothing or lack thereof. And everyone, their nakedness is just everywhere. And the men are well clothed. We don't accept nakedness in our culture. They, that, that is not beautiful. Why did uh, Meghan come here looking for Africa? This must have been very embarrassing for Meghan, but not nearly as bad as what happened next. Because then we had the dog biscuit drop disaster. Megan released her new batch of influencer dog biscuits into the Instagram sphere via Harry's polo playing buddy, Nacho. This only brought laughter and mockery towards Megan's stagnant new brand, American Riviera Orchard. And at the same moment, most likely adding fuel to Megan's angry little fire, we had the most beautiful first appearance from Catherine, the Princess of Wales, which was an overwhelming success. Everyone was completely consumed by her strength and energy at Troop and Colour. This would not have been the reaction Meghan was expecting and must have been a crushing blow to Meghan who was desperately hoping her dog biscuits would outshine the King's birthday parade. Following that, we had the stark reminder of the Sussex's estrangement from their fathers when we received lovely messages about Father's Day from the Prince and Princess of Wales, but only radio silence from the prodigal son and daughter in Montecito. Having firmly ruined their relationship with both Thomas Markle and the King, they find themselves with little to celebrate on Father's Day. And the latest blow to come to the Sussexes this year, so far, is the new biography named The House of Beckham by none other than the very talented Tom Bauer. It calls Meghan out for her deluded image of herself, but also reiterates what we already know about her, her need to climb the social ladder. It is alleged that Meghan felt she was of higher social status than that of Victoria Beckham after marrying Prince Harry and treated the former award-winning female artist and fashion designer like she was beneath her. It's again a huge blow for Meghan as she very much misread the room as she often does, overvaluing her own status, leading to a now very frosty relationship between the couple. We will get into more of the gritty details about the House of Beckham in the next video. But first, someone said, Victoria has more class in her little toe than grab it all Meghan. Victoria and David are British and proud of where they came from, their achievements and their family rock. 
I am a huge fan of the Beckhams. I know they have not done everything perfectly. In this new biography, we have some absolute bombshells pointing out their misgivings, but they are so hardworking and they love to depict a solid family, despite some of the problems that they've encountered. They have pushed through them and they have stuck together and I really admire them for that. But with regards to how the Sussexes, or more specifically, Meghan treated Victoria in those beginning days, it is rather appalling. And someone else said, Meghan thinking maybe she should have sent some jam to the First Lady. The solution to all of Meghan's problems right now seems to be, okay, I'll just send out some more jam or some more dog biscuits or whatever other rubbish she is planning to sell. That's quite hilarious. I don't think the jam would have helped with the nakedness problem, unfortunately. But I do not doubt that in Meghan's opinion, that would have solved any kind of controversy. Hit like if you think these disasters in the first half of 2024 for Harry and Meghan is a sign of things to come for the rest of the year and subscribe to help the crown family blossom. Tap the notification bell so you don't miss a future episode and we'll see you down in the comments.